Hello, hello. Uh, now that we understand a little bit the relationship between both, and as I try to say more than enough, the base number when you block them is three to four small clumps to big clumps. You can change that later, but the base blocking will be kind of like that. And to explain this, I will use action really fast. And what I will do is to create one clump system here. Let's click, click save. And let's just increase the amount of hairs that I have here to maybe a density of 10. And let's just reduce the amount of clumps so we can see it a little bit better. Let's use a density of 0.5 and a mask of 0.5. This will give us a non-linear distribution of the clumps. So we'll have really big clumps too. We could even get more or bigger clumps. So let's put a density of 0.2. So that's a good first iteration. And let's use the color preview so we can see them better. So these will be my big clump system. And if I create a small clump system, and by default, I decided that this was 2 and 5. So I come here and I will use 1 and 5. And just by that, in theory, we should have, if I try to show my small clumps now, per big clump, we should have between four and five. Some of them even have more. So let me just get this really, really tight so we can see them better. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can reduce this a touch to get, oh, I didn't put my mask of 1.5, that was why. So now my mask is 1.5. Distribution is almost the same. So let's put this, what? Mask 1.5. Enter. Accept. Now it's 1.5. So point, okay. Now it's correct. So you can see now that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This one doesn't have. This one has 5. This one has four, this one has three, this one has four, this one has seven. So that's a nice clump distribution. And if I get something like this, or even a less tighter clump like that, you can see now that my shapes, just with that, we are adding a really nice amount of detail. And that's the face of the blocking. So we can later say, okay, I want a lot of small clumps here. So we can paint masks and density masks to create more density here or less density of small clumps here or open the clumps or close the clumps. But this will be the base, the base mat behind the clumps, which means that for each, oops, for each, big clump oh wow we have three to five small clumps and this is really important for the first blocking pass that you do you normally don't go above five and you normally don't go below three on this case we are having two clumps that just have one or two, but it's just two of them. So it actually helps because we have more than 1% of all the clumps or more, more less than 5%, let's say, of all the clumps having this effect, which give us this nice variation. And that variation is just because we're using the mask on 0.5 and the density of the clump twos is five times more the density of my clump ones. So this is the base behind the density. And now that we have that, I did set something that is important to remember. So five, oops, clumps, then five. Oh, wow. So the big clumps, big clumps have five. No big clumps is one, then the small clumps should be between three and five. But there was something that I said 
one of the things that I said was that it's important to know when and how to affect them. So we can paint density on them too. And we need variation. But I will go into maps further along the groom fundamentals. First, I will stay with the core of the data. So for this, I will try to explain how does the shape behaves. Because one of the things that we saw before is that the shape of the actual clump is affected not just by the amount of clumps that defines these clumps, but also there are different aspects of this clump that can define not just the tightness of each clump, but each clump by itself have different attributes that can affect them and will define how this clump and the ones that are inside behave. So on the next lesson, we will see how the clumps can be affected and how do they work and relate to the rest of the group.